Hello Sheldon family, this is Stanley Sheldon, son of Hazel Jensen and Fred Eugene Sheldon Jr. and grandson of Maud Fine and Fred Eugene Sheldon, whom I will call Grandpa from now on. In the last 10 years of his life, after Maud died from about 1977 until his passing in 1987, Grandpa lived in this house at 3941 Cielo Street in Fullerton, California with his son Fred Jr. and wife Kathy and their six children. When I visited them there in those days, I spent a lot of time with Grandpa, mostly listening to him talk about his life and experiences, and I tape recorded many of those sessions. On the evening of September 3, 1978, he brought out his box of family pictures and we started going through them one by one. As he was telling me the story behind each picture, I was tape recording and putting numbers sequentially on each photo, thinking that I might combine the recording and photos into some sort of production in the future. Of course, at the time, I could not have envisioned what you are seeing here because the computer technology we have now in 2016 did not exist back in 1978. Grandpa's narration follows the order in which the pictures were pulled out of the box. Some will appear more than once since there were duplicates or they were substituted for a missing picture. If an item is missing, a blank screen will show. At places, I will inject notes or comments for the sake of clarity. Fortunately for us, Grandpa wrote on his pictures, sometimes on both front and back. If there is writing on the back of a picture, it will be flipped over. Since the pictures will follow Grandpa's narration, more time will usually be needed for looking or reading, in which case you may pause or back up the video. This first picture is of Grandpa's mother, Emma, taken in 1899. There were two copies, both of which had writing on the backs. There seems to be no pictures of his father, Frank, who was killed in a farming accident in Oregon in 1894 when Grandpa was eight years old. This is here. I don't know. Who is that? Well, that was uh, your uncle father here in 1800. In 89. That's me. That's me as a child. And that's my sister. My sister here is in another picture. That there picture is uh, almost 90 years old. so that if I died by then they would have something, you know, besides just a picture to look at. <clears throat> That's uh, my son That's and his wife. Frank and Catherine. Frank and Catherine. When was that taken? Oh, that is taken about, uh, uh, about 1940 or 45. It says 1937. Well, maybe that's what it is. I marked it there that, that way. Yeah. Now this is after my father was killed. My father was killed, and there's the size of kid I was when I when I lost my home, father and mother, right there. You're number two there. Yeah, I was number two. In those days, they used to cut the hair. Now this this kid here had used to have beautiful hair. Curled up, and this is Jessie, my sister. And she turned out to be a beautiful woman, and she's in the picture here again. Too. Number three is Jessie. Yeah. That's 
that's the last roundup. That's what I call it, the last roundup. And that's, that, that was a common word one time on the, on the range. Cowboy was dying or something. My, I'm on my last roundup. There's a song written like, like that. This there wouldn't interest you because this is a this is in the uh, in the grandma's in the nephew. Unless you wanted to put it on something. Uh, there's a scene that's, that's, that's uh, just as beautiful to look at in nature as it is here. And I fished on this lake, and we come across in the boat. This is Mount St. Helen in Washington. And it's a beautiful picture, and it's, it's just as pretty as that is. And when you're in this timber, it looks like a big snowball when you look through the timber. It don't look like it's more than, than uh, three blocks away from that. We caught big trout in there. The lake comes clear back this way. I kept that picture because it, it's it's better than you could take. These, these two wouldn't inter interest you, I don't think. But here's one. <clears throat> here's in the days when when my grandma wore the finest clothes you could wear. And that's a 1923 Buick. That was the first four-wheel drive, or the first four-wheel brake, I mean, car made. That one right there. And I bought it. They were Firestone tires I had put on there, and the first balloon tires. They called them balloon in those days for jumping yeah. 90 pounds down. But that's her there. You'll have some more pictures just like that her. Where, where, what were you doing in those days? I was drilling. And she's out on the out on the lease there. It'll show that here pretty soon. Let's see here. And this is me, and that's before the days of the movie actors. And they wanted you to look sober. They, 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 you, know, you took a picture, and I look like I'm mad there. <laughs> that's grandma. That's grandma. This is me, just come from Utah, and there's my deer in there. And this is my brother and, and his wife, they're both dead. Which brother is this? This brother Homer in Oregon. They, they're the uh, they, uh, Mormons. <clears throat> they're Mormons. Well, I know those people. I'll bet you don't know them. Well, I think I know this one pretty well. I say, you was a pretty good looking young boy. Hey, you. Know that. <laughs> and you Janice. Know that Janice. You look a lot like Janice. Can you put nine, ten more? Oh, let's do there in sequence on the tape. This is me and Grandma in the back of this here. This is a, one of her brothers in uh, San Diego. Looks like Frank, too. Yeah, Frank's in there, Frank Sheldon. Who's that? I don't know. And this is my brother. He's a dental dude. Well, surgeon. This is Grant? Grant, yeah. Looks like a distinguished man. A distinguished man. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a... <clears throat> he had a real dollar, $5 there's, there, there's something I got in the, in the war on the border. And uh, I was there when uh, Tarasas and Pancho Villa was fighting. Five pesos. Hmm? Five pesos. Five pesos. That's, that's uh, uh, 60 or 70 years old. Now there's the days that we had to do, there, there's a white truck, and I got a boiler on there, see, and we're going through the sand, 
You see me standing up here, and I have these teamsters dragging, pulling on the, on the, on the boiler. What was this boiler for? And that's a drilling well. well. We'll get to that later. But here, you look on the back there to tell you. Oh, yeah. There's Grandma. Yeah, there's Grandma in the... In the uh, in her rose garden. Is that in Monrovia? Yeah. This picture wouldn't concern you because it's it's uh, it's uh, in Phoenix and it's Gloria, Gloria Sheldon. That's their home, but there's no here's my wine of fish and this is my my grandson here, and he's holding his hand, we'd have got nothing. See, I got the fish. Who's that, Bobby? And that's uh, that's Fred, Fred, Eugene Sheldon, Frank. Oh, son. Eugene, yeah, I know Eugene. Who's this? Yeah, that's just a neighbor. This is this Homer and his wife and his children, and they just had a big celebration, and there's 40 children's up there. Where's that, in Garibaldi? Garibaldi, yeah. My daddy in there? Dad in there? Garibaldi and Tillamook. Yeah. Doesn't he have any pictures of daddy? Sure he does. This is one of the houses that my guy built. In fact, that's a duplex that I built there. You'll see, that, you'll see some more of Is that Norman and Norman there? Huh? Is that Norman? And that's Gene. Gene, Gene Sheldon. And this is uh, me in front of the duplex that I built. That, that's one of the... I, I, I built that and lived in it. And here's the Ford truck out here that you drove. Yeah, there it is. It's nice and clean. This is my uh, my home in Oregon. Sixteen rooms in that house. Three fireplaces. There's one over there, one here, and one here. Sixteen rooms in it. That's a whole lot bigger than this house. And this is the wood shed here. And the, the, we, we corded the wood around for the walls. And, and in the summertime, we burnt the walls down. And then in the in the winter time, we burn the wood on the Indian side stacked up. But that's that, that, that's small water wood. And we used to catch fish right here in the front front yard, or stream run down here. Hmm. What do you mean you burn the walls down? Right, you walled it up with wood. You see, oh, you, you I parted see. it up right oh. under the roof. It rains a lot in that country, you know. Now here's some real history. There's a my hunting outfit, and there's the trailer I built. I built that trailer there. Oh, yeah. Okay. See. And there's the trailer builder. You want to number these for me? And this is my, this is my same, same thing there. It's kind of a duplicate. Here's another duplicate. I think I saw that place. Yeah. In fact, you can. I have one of those pictures if you want to make. I'm sure to put the right numbers on it. Here's my lot where I had all, all of the fruit trade on my place in Monrovia. Oranges, lemons, Babcock peaches, apricots, and the boysenberries. I remember that place. There's the garage. It had yeah. two doors opening yeah. straight through. Yeah. Yeah, huge over there, lots of times. There's, oh, yeah. there, there's the duplex. I drew the, drew the plans. And the... Gotta turn it that way. And this is the old, the old desert, desert out of Yuma between. This is 24, and no, I was 25. Now this is the, the old plank road across the desert. 
when we come across, you're, you're, your dad was three years old. And I, and I got him stuck in the sand and we made him think he's going to, you ought to see him scramble. He, he, he finally dug out, too. But this is the old plank road between Yuma and San Diego. The old plank road. You've heard of it, haven't you? Yes, I have. That's it, right there. How, that, how many miles is that? Well, it's about six or seven, maybe eight miles long. The number's small. That's a, that's a guess, but it's close enough. Here is uh, Frank Sheldon and Jesse Sheldon in the big snowstorm in Oregon. You can see how deep the snow was. See, that's a, they, 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 that's the top of it out there. There's a horse in, out there in it. Huh. It come the first day of October. Who are these now? Hmm? Who, who are these? Yeah, that's uh, Frank and, and, and uh, my little girl that died. Oh, Jesse. Was burned to death, yeah. Oh. And this is a six unit cord I sold for $32,500. I drew the plans for that. We done all the work. Is that in Monrovia? In Monrovia, yeah. Here's another deer that I killed. I think it was Utah. It's more like a school. And this is a grandma and grandpa there. You've got to have it more simple. Yeah, that's right. So that is on top. Uh -oh. just, yeah. Well, what I'm doing is it just to keep this. And this is that same trailer up. that I built, and that's my hunting Jeep that I use. I bought that Jeep for $125, reboarded, overhauled, rebuilt it throughout. And there's a cushion in here. A cushion in there, in the other room that Grandma made for that for that, for that, that, that jeep. This is, uh, I think this is Fred, your your dad. Yeah. And and the big dog. Where was this now, Mejia? In, in Mejia, Texas. So is that your home? Well, we lived there, but our home was where we were operated. Our oh. home in Colorado, Kansas. That's your day. Wyoming, New Mexico, Arizona, California, yeah. and Texas. And uh, let's see, what am I looking at? Oh, that's me in my son's home in, uh, in, uh, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, not, not Gallup, but uh, Glendale, Glendale, Arizona. Oh, wow. oh, it says Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Phoenix is just across the road. Oh, that's right. Glendale and Phoenix yeah. are next. Right together. You were pretty heavy then. Oh, yes. I weighed about 170. My most ever weight was 180. Now, hey, let's see. I think this is me standing here on this well. This is that white truck you saw me pulling this in, into this here. Uh -huh. And this is a part of rigging up there, getting ready to drill. 1927? Yeah. And here I stand here in my, my rough clothes here. And this is another one. I think that was in, in 1927, too. Did you strike oil on this? No. About $35,000 there. No oil. Now this is a picture after a hunt. And I killed this deer in Colorado, northwest Colorado. And he had a 31-inch 30, spread across here. And, and the kids wanted to hold my gun, you know. So. Uh -huh. So I let them do that. But you see the horns here? See them deer horns? Can you see them? Yeah. This looks like Frank and Catherine's place in Montebello. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What date was that? That was, uh, let's see. That was about... Uh, it's about 1958. That is about... Um, about 19... 
48 or 9. Uh-huh. I hunted in Colorado that year. I went for elk and I caught that have, big deer. I think it might have been a little later than that. I'm older than Bobby, aren't I? He is, I wish you are. And Bobby's in that picture. It's probably around 1952. Yeah. And this is, uh, I think that's some of the Jackson in, in, in Ohio, or Iowa. 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 And I can't tell what that is there. It might be me. I guess it's me sitting there in Jack's room. And no, this is a woman. Is it? Well, that's Grandma. And she her ears, her eyes bandaged no. up? I don't think it's even Grandma. It looks like a young woman. Oh, a young woman. Yeah, it's Gloria then. This is just a picture of Phoenix. inches of freeboard on here, and from the bottom here up here is 57 inches, there's a cab on there. Uh -huh. That boat was, was seaworthy, that, that went into the ocean out the other side of Catalina. That's, uh, that's a dad Alexander. You never heard of him, I don't think. Yeah. Did you? That's him. He died at 84 years old. This was your stepfather? Yeah. Died at 84 years old. Here's a neighbor, and we used to, every time they'd catch fish, they caught these fish uh, near uh, 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 that lake, to the Geyser Lake in, in Oregon. Crater Lake? Crater Lake. Crater Lake out of, uh, uh, I can't think of the lake now. And that's uh, at uh, Shady Cove, Oregon. That was me back at the end of 35 foot trailer into, into uh, uh, Hammett, California. 1959 truck. And uh, what does this say here? That's another picture of Total Mountain, I think. It's Again, Jack and Glorious Place, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And this is, this is your dad again. So that to, to uh, your, uh, when he went in, when he's in the army. And this is Jack. This is Jack there. <laughs> in Gloria, in Iowa. And this is me and Jack taking pictures there at his home in, in uh, Phoenix. Here I am in the oil field in Mahana, Texas, with a 1923 Buick. That's me sitting in the car. Now this is me here, and these are all, the, 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 this fellow was a uh, geologist, and these, these, one of them was a banker there, and another one was uh, a, uh, oh, he, he re recorded the, the, the leases. This is F. E. Sheldon here, and this is a, a, a Conatella number one, I think it is. It'll read on there, you story of it. 2,900 feet deep. This is the trailer that I built, and this is at uh, uh, above the dam at Parker, <coughs> California, or uh, called the Colorado River. And this is my, my, my Jeep again and trader I built. And 
This is another deer I killed. Oh, I might just tell it on the back there, huh? Back, let's see. Doesn't say when. Two hundred yard distance. Oh. That that's, that's Jack's place in uh, in. Uh, see what I done? I put these big sides on and made they sold good because you could walk clear around the whole house and not get wet, and the, the mud didn't hit 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 here and splash up again the house. Monrovia. Yeah, Monrovia, California. And this is me on the Colorado River, and that's my boat there. You see, it's got a V shaped bottom. Mm -hmm. That same boat. And here's the neighbor's boat alongside of mine. And that's Jesse's. Tombstone in, in, in Denver, Colorado, where she's buried. Six years old. That's right. And this is Grandma come out to the lease here, where, where the wells where we're drilling. Uh -huh. She come out. She she got a big hat. It's summertime. Here's the schoolhouse that your grandpa went to 87 years ago in Oregon. And my father's buried just about a half a mile from there. And this was taken in 1958. 1958, yeah. That's when we went back there. We went back there in 1958. But I went to school at that school before I left for Kansas. I was five years old. I bet you that school's still there. Yeah, sure it is. That's built all the Douglas Fir, the finest lumber you could buy. Interesting. And this is Grandma and the three, three kids right there in the backyard of her father's home in Denver. See, they got a woodshed back there, and, and the trees are all, and all the leaves are off in the winter time. Whose kids are these? And they're mine. One of them is uh, Frank and Jesse and Fred. Fred's in knicker pants. Why? Is your dad in knicker pants there? Uh -huh. You mean you mean Frank, don't you? Isn't that Frank? Yeah, Frank. It's Frank. Frank. You mean my dad's not in there? No, your Uncle Frank. Darn it. And there's where I had my boat out to sea, out toward Catalina, and caught them two big fish there.
This is Grandma's brother. He's a, a, a captain in the police force in Denver. He's a 32nd degree Mason, that fellow is. What's his name? William Fine. I got a car. Fireman. He's a fireman there, isn't he? No, no. Policeman? Policeman. Want to stay on there? Chief yeah. Police Captain or something? Yeah. This is a well I'm drilling in Texas. This is the boiler out here, and this is the drill pipe, and that's the well there. Steam powered drilling rig. That's right. Laura? What? Laura? I have to write for Stanley. Well, Fred will remember this one here. This is drilled at Rehoboth Mission in, in New Mexico. $16,000 I got for that well. Are these your kids here? Well, Those they, children yours? Uh, I, I think they are. I think they're. Maybe Jack and, and Frank there. Here's old Geronimo. Got a car or somebody that. in Northwest Colorado, and I had to come through Utah, and I thought maybe they'd get after it not having a clearance, you know, and I talked to the man, and I told you before, I heard me tell you, he treated me like a gentleman, and he believed every word I said, hmm. but I told him the truth. I said, I know, I realize, I said, but he says, that's all right, Mr. Shelton. But take your word for it. You thought you didn't have a license? I didn't have a clearance out of Colorado, you know, see. I was in Northwest Park, and I was in a wilderness, see, and there was no way to get anything. Any, I bought got my license out of Denver, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told him my story, but I said, I, if I have to, I said, I'll, of course, get the proof. Not that I'm on the... Uh, cheat you out of anything or anything like that, but I want my, I want, I, you want the truth and I want the truth. And I said, I don't want to go away here and leave myself in that. And he said, that's all right, Mr. Sheldon, you go right, right ahead. Hmm. He said, come and see us. There's a duplex again, and that's, that's the Grandma in Mahia, Texas. Grandma in Mahia, Texas. And this one is Monrovia again? Yeah, that's Monrovia. And this is at the reunion we had at uh, Grass Valley, California. The names are on there of all the people. And this is the chief of police. You just look at him, a young fellow. That's her, that's her brother. Here's a thing that you can read. Did you ever hear of Nevada City, California? Yes. Did you ever hear of Virginia City, in Nevada? Yes. Well, now this is Virginia City in Montana. And it is... Uh, it is uh, uh, Nevada City, Montana, and they're about the same distance apart. Uh, the, the first ones I tell you about is uh, the other side of Reno. See, between uh, it's between uh, Kit Carson or Carson City, Nevada, and uh, Reno, and, and so this was so much like that in the days that I lived, in the, in the gold mining days, that I wrote quite a story here about it. And you can read it. Here is Virginia City, Nevada, and uh, the, the Carson City, City Nevada, and uh, something else there in Nevada. CR Nevada. Capital of Nevada. Yeah. Well, I, I wrote this on here so that people would know 
that I, I lived in that day, in the gold mining days, see. So I picked this up when I was in Montana. And this is, this is the, 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 the three tough guys that were shot. They're here. They're marked on here. It's quite a story, and it's interesting. It'll be history someday, Virginia City, Nevada. Nevada, Montana, see? Virginia City, and Nevada City, Montana. And they're, they're west of the, they're west of the, of uh, the uh, Teton Mountains. And uh, I, I could, I can, I can give you a thing geographically right to the, just point it out to you. I mean, just this is the a, a good description of the old West. I, I am a G L A D was glad glad I was here for some of this, some of this, see, the hangman's house. And it's quite a story there, and it's a true story. There ain't no baloney about it. You didn't have to lie about them, them things in those days. I think this was their hangout. The robbers, robbers' roost. That's what it was. They hung out here, and they, and they. Uh, but if you'd like to keep that, if I could see better, I could read this stuff. You know. Sure. Now this was a sad story. After after I left Oregon, then this sister here, she stayed with my mother, and my brother Homer he stayed with him, but me and or me and Ray were were out. And now she was a graduate from this university at Chico, California. See, she went to school and she got married there. And the man that she married, she's a, she's a terrible again liquor, and she's a terribly religious. She's like her mother was. She calls the booze the devil's brew. They talk to her, and she tells people, they come bring it around her, I don't want that in my house. That's the devil's brew. Get out. That's the way she was. And she's, and so after years, where he come back and compromised and told her he, how wrong he'd been, and he wanted to go back, but she wouldn't take him back. But they had two little girls, and she did agree to be buried in all these here. The little girls and him could be buried there. Heimbeck was his name, and that's it. There may be a story on the other side. I wouldn't know. Here was a beautiful picture of your grandmother. She was a much better woman, and somebody took something and blotted her face out. Why? Well, you see, I, probably some jealous woman. I wouldn't know. But that's what they done, destroyed. But she's a better looking woman than this woman here. Much better. That's, that's Grandma. Where was that picture taken? That is taken to Long Beach, California, where they got the, the rock business out across there. This is a tram up here at the top. And that made me sick. I, I just. Uh, let's see what this is. Mom and Dad. Sheldon. And that's from one of the boys, I guess. This is me and her in Mahia, Texas. For Frank. Fred was born, born. This is a, it was taken by Fred, your father. And that's me and her outside of the trailer when I was building it. <clears throat> had it out. <clears throat> and that was built right after the style of the trailers they built in that day, see? Uh -huh. And uh, 
This wasn't the only one. I built one 24 feet long. And I built uh, a, any amount of small trailers for cars hauling up to one ton to three, between a ton and 3,000 pounds. A fellow wanted me to go in the business and draw plans for him and everything, and I turned it down. This is a beautiful house that I built here. And this, I, I, this is all red, all that. And this is a big garage, and this is a breezeway, and then there's a bathroom in here, in this house here, and this has got a real fireplace in it, and this, all of this stonework, it's still in, 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 uh, Monrovia. But that was a dandy house. I sold that for $16,000. Huh. Here I am again with the, not the Jeep, but the car and the trailer. Fred wanted these pictures and they come and got them. And uh, so he, he made us up a set, a set of them. And I don't know whether you know what that one is or not. Yeah, I do. This is Fred Eugene Sheldon and Kathy McDougall married in Whittier, California, June. This is the wedding cake. I, uh, you mark that in if you know when it's, when it's right there. This is Uncle Frank Fine, a brother of Maud Sheldon in Denver, Colorado. He went to Russia in World War I, was there two and a half years, passed away in 1945. The year 1917, Wilson was, Wilson was President of the United States. He spent 17 years, in, in, in 17 months or something a year in, um, in Russia. an old picture. Uh -huh. There's the greatest, the greatest thing of that kind on earth. After that room was put near, put near a five-room house under that giant tree. He might uh -huh. tell you more on the other side. These are old, old cars. These are all postcards, aren't they? I think, I think they are. This is her, her brother now, is still living in Denver. And this is the schoolhouse, it tells you on there, that I went to school. Hillside, Oregon. Hmm? Hillside, Oregon. Yeah, Hillside, Oregon. I went to school there. And this is another trip to the, we used to go to the Colorado River pretty regular. And I got a grandma one time so she'd fish a little bit, but she wasn't much of a fisherman. Detroit, Detroit, Michigan. That's just an old car. So who's this? Jesse, Jesse. That's Jesse number one. Your sister. Yeah, my sister. She died at 72 years old from that, got that spine, spine trouble. Here's something that, that's interesting. If it, 
be opened. This is my, my, my take the place of a transit. See, see if you can open that. And then you look through it like you would, something like you would a transit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, let's see here. I don't want to bend this thing. You see, it's a compass, and you set it. set it up here, see, and then you, you take your, your compass there, and you can line up clear across there for a quarter of a mile. See the hair in there? Yeah. And it, it, it takes the place of it's a compass and transit. And here's where your level are here, so you can tell when you're level. Mm -hmm. That gives you your level. That's a, that was an expensive uh, thing. You, and I carried that for years and years and years on wells and houses. I, 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 I moved houses, you know. And how I'd done that, instead of hiring a, a, a civil engineer, I'd go along the side of the house here and take this thing, and I'd set a, a board right out here like that. Then I'd go in here and set one there, and here and here. And all I had to do was to, was to keep these jacks. We raised a building, a stone building, picked it up off the ground and raised it up four feet and put a foundation under. That was a whole insane asylum in uh, Pueblo, Colorado. And uh, they said it couldn't be done when we done it. And these jacks, these men are all along these jacks. And if one of them gets a little, a little bit low, you, he's numbered. Like you'd be number nine. Number nine, a half a quarter turn, a half turn, turn and a half, see? Man stands right here and looks on that line. Then they go up on this line here and so on and around. Keep on raising it slowly. If you don't crack it, crack into the building. So that is pretty... Uh, they told me that I couldn't do that. I have to have a civil engineer. And I said, well, find it. If I can't do it, I said, nobody can. And yeah. So that's, that's bullheaded, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we done it. And you know, to hear them crazy people cuss us out the windows. Call you everything. The whole time and scream and holler was a terrible. We finally got kind of used to it. And. Uh, That's an instrument, an instrument to see you want these, don't you? Yeah. Well, this is, this is uh, Grandma and uh, Jean Sheldon, Frank's son. And this is the house of the people, neighbor lived next door that you saw. They moved to Oregon. Fred Jr. and that's Jack and that's Frank. Old Frank, he'd always he didn't want his pictures like storage, you know. Always going in the opposite direction for everybody else. So he gets back to them, hides. And this is Winter Haven right across from uh, Yuma, Arizona. Winter Haven, California. And that they, they, they're up here near those prisons. Uh, did, you, did you want to number these pictures? Uh, yeah. Well, this was a. They, you couldn't find rooms in, in, in the boom in Wichita Falls, in the oil boom, in 1918 and 19. 
So we went, they had they hit an old well out west of there, and we went out and bought a piece of land, $20,000, and built uh, another, we called it a pasteboard hotel. The first night that we opened that took in $149. We only charged a dollar a bed. Working men, you know. Things are a little cheaper in those days. And the well come in dry, and when the well came in dry, the town died. The town died? Yeah. Who are these two boys here? And that two boys there is uh, Fred and... Uh, and Frank? Fra yeah. Or, uh, Jack. 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 And this is a big fire that happened in Wichita Falls, Texas. And all of these trucks either melted down, and the, the frames even melted down, and all of them back in there. There's about 12 or 14 trucks in there that's all shot, shot to pieces. That put us out of business. And this is Frank Fine, the one that went to, uh, you saw in that picture there. And this is my cousin and his wife. And that's the kind of hats they wore. That hat there cost about $40. That's a genuine ostrich tail. Uh -huh. and, and he finally died. Now this is uh, us here. Uh, the, uh, see, I, I'm the fireman. And this is Jimmy Garvin. And this is his brother, Frank Garvin. 1907, 1907. I was running train out of Denver, out of uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And this is the big snowstorm. Uh, I told you that the snow got so deep that uh, it, it, it just the top of the fences. You, you could you saw you could when you real picture you could just see that. And this is this is Grandma. And that uh, that's little Jesse there. That's the one that's, that's burned to death. And me outside of this hotel, see. So he tore this hotel down and moved it to Brecken, Breckenville, to Texas. And this, this is what we started up there. It's kind of a story there, but it's not very important. Here was a picture of that hotel, and here's a picture of those trucks again. And this is Frank. Well, we just saw them. We just saw that. Yeah. Me. And this is a picture. Now this is a railroad wreck. This is 31 cars of bullion. And the runaway started out of Buford, Wyoming, and started down the eastern slope of, of uh, Sherman Hill. And she ran about 15 or 18 miles. And they said when she passed Granite Canyon, I, you, I, you know, I had this other fellow that was in the wreck there, told you about when for the fire by son is the gong, and when he passed through Granite. When they passed through Granite, the Granite wired Cheyenne, there's a train come through here, it looked like three cars, it is going so fast. You better get everything ready in Cheyenne. But they didn't ever get to Cheyenne. They hit about 10 or 15 miles out of Cheyenne, there was a locomotive on a work train out, and that train knocked that locomotive 500 tons down the greater road track 500 feet. That locomotive, after she'd done that, she reared up like this and dug her grave right into the ground through the double track. Did it completely bury it? It buried it. And the cars come down on top of it, and when they hit, they hit so hard that they just stripped the wheels off and took the tops off. Just like that. Just like you just like you stuff them in the leaf, the leaf book like that. And there's me standing on top of that wreck. Thirteen men died in that wreck. Hmm. One of the greatest wrecks of a kind in all time in that country. I put in 
Is this the same wreck that's here? That's the same wreck. So that's there was, the looks like there was fire there, too. Well, that's very, of course, everything is fire, and there's bullion in there. There's 32 cars of bullion. And that wasn't hay, you know. That is a term, of course, that was all recovered because of the metal. But this is, this locomotive is buried in here somewhere, and these cars have come over. The cars come over, you can just see how, what it broke. You couldn't tell there was cars. No. And the brakeman was on this train here, laid down on the running board and got his hands underneath here, and when that car hit that thing, he took off just like an airplane. And the thing went out, let's see now, where is the distance around here? Well, you know where that fire truck is down there tonight? Yeah. It took off like an airplane like that and, and hit the top of a little hill and landed on the other side. And he was hanging on. <laughs> and they told him in the examination, you're fired. He said, mister, you never fired me. He said, I was fired, he said, when I went off the top of that train. He said, I won't even ride your railroad out of town. I'm going to walk. <laughs> yeah, that's a... Uh, that's another one of uh, uh, that uh, a brother of mine, or a cousin of mine, I mean, that you saw with the big, big plume over here. You saw this picture, didn't you? Yeah. And that's the Great Railroad Wreck. That happened, let's see, in about 1907. Mm -hmm. About 1907. And here's, the, here's my uncle, the great cattle man. And the dust storm run him clear out. Broke him. He's worth seventy-five dollars to $100,000 in those days. His cattle and everything else. His house got so bad and full of sand. He had a beautiful home ranch at Nest City, Kansas. This is your... your uh, boy sitting in front of you, right here. That's you. That's me. And that's Jimmy Garvin. That's another one. Who's Jimmy Garvin? Yeah, Jimmy Garvin was an Irishman. He was an Irish Catholic boy. And we was great friends for a long time, and all of a sudden we fell out. And uh, we didn't get along good together. And I was quite a boxer, and he wanted, he, he wanted to fight it out. And I said, well, Jimmy, I don't want to hit you. He says, you hit me. He says, I'll clean you up. He put on them boxing gloves, and he didn't last two minutes. And that settled him and never was a friend after that. Got along fine. I used to go to church with him and everything just to please him. And this is a, 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 near that place in in uh, the days in Frank and Jack, and what you call it. And this is the cotton fields. See, see the cotton bales of cotton? Is this the hotel? Here? Yeah. And this is the bales of cotton here, see them? Yeah. Ready to go to the compress, if you, if you don't know what a compress who, is. Who are the people in the picture? Well, uh, that's me, I got the kids out, like Fred takes his kids out. You and know? who are these two down here? The same two. Same two of two. They never saw any bales of cotton. They took them out and showed them what there was. And the same here. The same thing here. See, it tells them here, in a yard in te Texas, note the uh, cotton bales. And this is Grandma back of Grandpa. He died at 100 years old. Like one day of being 100 years old. And, and you've got some of that stock in you. This was her, her father? Yeah, her father. And this is her. And this is the, 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 the three kids here. And this is him? Yeah, that's her father. This is the backyard. And this is a cold. The, oh, this is for the horses here. That is the horse and buggy day, you see. And this is the coal shed and the house, and you see the roof out of it out here. And that is the way back, let's see, over about, oh, about 
1918, it says there. 1918? Well, take the 19, or what you call it from that would be uh, 76. 60 um, years. Yeah, 60 years ago. And this is a this is a, a partner I had in Texas, and uh, there's one picture. This is Grandma here. This is the Golden Eagle story. They had him dress up in all kinds of dresses and go on a what they call a hay rag, a hay, hay wagon hunt or uh -huh. something like that. I never was on one of them, but. And that's, that's some of the same same uh, pictures. They had no relation. There's some of the girls and boys that worked at the Golden Eagle store. That is a seven-story building. And here is uh, me and a fellow here. I had a uh, lease and land from him. That's when I was getting that 10,000-acre lease down there. This is me and Grandma when we, I told you about that. And this is uh, her, and this is World War I, 1918. And this guy is headed for, now, for Russia. Is that her brother? Yeah, her brother. And this is out at, uh, at uh, oh, uh, Fort Logan, Fort Logan, Colorado. And this shows some more of her pictures, and this is her other brother in uh, San Diego, California. Uncle Charlie Fine. Yeah, and this is uh, this is the the other the other Uncle Will you saw as a policeman in his young days, and this is this Frank that went to Russia. Here he is here. See, was he sent to Russia as yeah. a, in, during World War One? Yeah. Shipped out of Vladivostok, clear across to Japan, across this Pacific Ocean, Vladivostok, and clear across Russia, 6,000 miles. And now I see that's Uncle Will when he first, when he was a, when he was a cop before he got promoted. That's the one I showed you, the police captain. He got to be, be promoted, and he's a 32nd degree Mason. And here is uh, Jesse, death for 19. And this boy here, I don't know, who, do you know him? Yeah. Have any idea? Yeah, I have some ideas. Now, you're a pretty good looking kid, you know that? Thank you. Pretty good looking boy, I'd say. Shady Cove, Oregon. Who's the lady in the picture? That, that's uh, just a neighbor. And they moved out of out of Monrovia to Oregon. There's an awful good friend. And this is your beloved dad. 1942. He wasn't a bad looking kid. Was he graduating from high school there? Yeah. About that time. And this is his brother, Jack, in Iowa. Now, this boy here, I just don't know. Grandma would know him, but I don't know him. Now, these are some of the folks I live for, and this shows you how they used to raise chickens in the old days. Just out in the yard. All kinds of chickens. All kinds of eggs. They could do it. The Mormons now try to get their our people to do it, but they won't do it. But there's a way to do it right here, any place. But you got to have them caged, you know. And you can see my old land out there. This is a big chicken coop here. You can tell that the car was old, see. Old car. And this, is, this kid was a tough kid. He was a he was a, a cousin of mine, and he was angry. Angry. This is his dad here. His dad is always a yorn him, petting him, you know, and it made him so angry. They 
couldn't get along with themselves. Was this in Kansas? In Kansas. Well, I'm going to take these here and, and check these out. And that's Frank Sheldon at Rehoboth Mission, New Mexico. That's little Jesse and Frank Sheldon, Jesse that burned to death. This is my cousin, or my brother in Oregon, Garibaldi, and he's, uh, he, he was in everything, all kinds of stuff. Who is that? That, that, that is uh, Homer? Homer, Homer Sheldon. Here he is again here. He was a great fisherman. He liked to get drowned in the Columbia River. But they got off. Now here is a, here we are. That was my sister. Is she a pretty woman? Yes. Very. That's the one you saw. She died in 1972. And she hated whiskey. Anybody that had booze or had anything to do, do with it was out. They come to visit her and they brought liquor. She said, don't bring that in my house. She made a good Mormon. Yes. And this is her here. You no, know, this is my, my, my Maud. You can see her dress there. She and that's me there. And here she is, in the set in the car. She learned to drive the car. It is a, a power. It is written on the back there: power to start and power to stop. <laughs> the first four wheel be made. Here she is again, Sarah dressed up there. Mm -hmm. That has cost forty dollars. Had a big ostrich plume. See the plume hanging down. Yeah. There? Beautiful. Did you have a lot of money in those days? Well, you handled big money. Yeah. You men draw big salaries and all that kind of stuff. And I sold at this at least I sold her fifty two thousand dollars. And that was that would be about, about 350000 of this sketch here now, because that was money. It was uh, the gold, the back of the gold, the gold certificates. Well, here's some of the works. Here's a, here's a, in the, you're drilling in Texas. This is a partner here, this guy here. There's the only time that I smoked. See, I'm smoking a cigarette there. Yeah. And that's and that's the thing that I quit. And uh, this is in this is in New Mexico, drilling in New Mexico and building building the rig. They're building this derrick. You see here, she yeah. just started up. And here's where it's partly finished. Here's where it's partly finished, except the top ain't finished here yet. And this is New Mexico. This partner wasn't in with me. When when we hit oil, he wanted to give it, and he got an oil shown, and I sold. I sold and bought a home in California. I bought that Buick car, and uh, had a ten or eleven thousand dollars besides. And uh, I, I put the see in the fifty-two thousand. I put that into the well. See, drilling the well. And. <clears throat> Here, here we are again. Here's what I was in motive power. And these three men are all in motive power. They transfer over. And here's a, here's a well here. What do you mean motive power? Motive power, that means them big steam engines, see? You work out of the roundhouse, the roundhouse into a fireman, and the fireman into an engineer. Now you're getting some, you're getting some, uh, some real, real tough, real tough stuff now, so hold your head. To lead into these next four pictures, Grandpa tells a long story. He starts by telling of how he speculated in wheat during World War I by borrowing money from a bank, Mr. Loring's bank. But by the time he is ready to deliver the wheat, the bottom has dropped out of the wheat market, 
so that he either can't sell the wheat or has to sell it at a big loss. And to pay back Mr. Loring at the bank, he has to sell off the cattle on a ranch he owned at that time. Next, he goes to the tungsten boom, which was going on at that time in Colorado, to run a stage line, only to go broke again when the boom goes bust, when the price of tungsten drops. After this, he gets hired by some Studebaker dealers in Colorado to do endurance and performance tests on their cars, and this eventually gets him down to El Paso, Texas, near the Mexican border in 1916 during the fight with Pancho Villa, and this gets him involved with the U.S. Army running a stage line shuttling soldiers back and forth between Fort Bliss and El Paso. The story takes about 30 minutes to tell, but in it we hear about some of Grandpa's interesting experiences and much about his personal philosophy and code of conduct. Now this is, this is when I was on the border in the fight with Pancho Villa, General Carranza, Carranza? No, Carranza and Terrasa and, and Pancho Villa. And Terrasas was the big cattleman in North Texas, and they was the one that they, they, they robbed. They, Villa robbed a lot of them, and, and they shipped a lot, a lot of cattle across the borders in, in the United States. And here I am, and that's me standing there. Now, these wasn't pictures, wasn't taken for show off. I didn't take the pictures. These were the pictures, but this is the 5th Field, Ohio 5th Field Artillery. This was over here. Is that a rabbit they got there? Yeah, oh yes, you're going to see some rabbits before you get down here. Now, how I happened to be in this country down here was that the big tungsten boom came in in Colorado. I had just gone back broke on a ranch and owed a lot of money. I, there's a letter here telling you somewhere maybe in that box. I'd like to get them out and have you read them. After going broke, that, that bank gambled everything that they had on me. And they had three banks or four banks or five banks, something like that. It's just uh, the starting with a chain of banks like they have, you know, every town here now. And and uh, so they liked the way I operated, and uh, and and they, they they encouraged it to go ahead, and we did. And we was we was taking the chance on the war, World War One, that wheat would go to three dollars a bushel. Well, I forget how many carloads we we shipped, but we shipped five carloads that we practically lost altogether. That's 980 bushels to the car, or, or about. The world was short of wheat. Every country in the world was crying for wheat. And we had checked back in the first war in America, the second war with England, and so on, the Mexican War, and wheat had always gone to $3 a bushel. Wheat usually sold from 80 cents to a dollar a bushel, depending on the weight of the wheat. Bushels of wheat measures in a, bu a basket or in a bucket of a, 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 a bushel measurement, see, and you level that off. Now, you can take one kind of wheat, will test 50 pounds and fill that sack, see. Another one will... will you, you weigh it, and it weighs 60 pounds. So the difference in the class of wheat there is three pounds to the bushel. Means it's better fill, it's better flour, better everything. Now I give you them as hypothetical figures, because the wheat could be down to 66 or 68 pounds to the bushel, shriveled up bad, dry weather. 
didn't get a rain when it was in the milk. If anybody hears this story and knows anything about wheat, but then they'll 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 they'll, they'll concur in it. So <clears throat> we we shipped this wheat bill of laden attached. You know what that means? Hmm. Well. There's a bill of lading there, and that bill of lading reads that when the minute that they, 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 that arrives, they're notified that their wheat is in town. In this case, it's either in New Orleans or in that big wheat port north of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. I can't call the name of that. That's another export town. So we had five carloads of that wheat out there. But when the Crimea opened up, the wheat went down. Before, the wheat was okay, but when they got ours, they, they had backed down because they, they see they, they wasn't going to have to pay $3 a bushel. To, I think the market went down 50 or 75 cents right off of the bat because the Crimea was the wheat basket of, the, of, of Asia and Europe, southern Europe. It wouldn't be southern Europe. It would be west of the Crimea. It would be southern Russia. So they rejected the wheat. Now what are we going to do? Now the bank knew if we got that, that them five carloads of wheat, you know, it'd be 5,000 bushels, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And if they'd have got that money, now we had that money to come back to that bank. But they turned it down. Now, not only we got it, but the bank got it, too, same time, and that broke us. We had a, our own thrashing machine. We had, our, uh, we had 60 some head of mules and horses working for us from the Dueling Brothers, the biggest railroad grinding contractors in the world. And how did I get acquainted with them? Because I worked with them, and they was grading the, the second track to make the double track between Omaha and Ogden. Mm -hmm. And I give them the best service and we've become great friends. They were wealthy men. It shows you if you're honest and do the right thing and you're a poor man and you work beside a rich man, he'll accept you. No, that's not bragging. That's true. Anybody will place a bet on you if they know you're for real. And I don't say that to brag on myself, but I was an orphan boy, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm not broke tonight. Now, here's a strange thing that happened. When I went broke, I went to the tungsten, oil, or, uh, tungsten fields out of Boulder, Colorado, to, to, to Lakewood and Eldora. And anybody that thinks that this is funny talk, they can look that up if they want to. They could write to Boulder and ask them if there was a tungsten boom way back in them days. Let's see, that is about the year of... Uh, 19, 19, 12 or 13, somewhere in there. You were pointing at this picture. Is that part uh, of the story? Well, yeah, that's part of the story. Shows a Studebaker. Yeah. Yes, all, all of this thing is, is amalgamates together, every bit of it. This over here. Now, let's see, we'll get back to this thing here. So we, we went out, to, I went into the bank. And I told the bank, one of them said, uh, there's a certain amount of money owed here, and I'm going to go. I asked the, the, uh, the lady in front, and she said, Mr. Loing is in the back. And I went back, and Mr. Loing sat there with his hands hanging down like that and, and almost weeping. I think he had been crying. And he thought so much of me as a friend, I was much younger than he was, 
he, he couldn't have thought any more of a child of his own son. And I went in, I said, oh, Mr. Lone, what's the matter? He says, I can't tell you. I said, Mr. Loing, I says, you can tell me anything. And you know that I won't repeat it. I will not repeat it. And I said, I want to help you. And he says, Fred, you can't help me. I says, you don't know what I can do. So I finally got him to tell me. He said, I overloaned you. And the bank examiner will be in here 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And if he comes, according to the laws of Colorado, and reports to me I'm on my way to the penitentiary. Hmm. I stood there and looked at it, and I'll tell you, I was dumbfounded. I was shocked. But Grandma told him one time when I was drilling a well, and we had an office in Los Angeles, California, and Texas, they said, we haven't heard from Fred. We wonder what's the trouble. And she said, I don't know. Well, he says they're so-and-so and so-and-so. She said, well, I'll tell you something. Fred says he always has the ace in the hole. That's not very nice, but he learned that in gold mining days in the gambling fields in the big gambling halls. Not that I was a gambler, but I heard that. The man that had the ace in the hole won the pot. And that's why that slang phrase was used. She says he always has the haste in the hole. And she knew of this deal here. Now, when they didn't know it when we was in this thing, I bought cattle and shoved them back in the mountains in the, in the range at a few pennies a head to the government. And I shoved them back there till I had more than 100 head. And that was the ace in the hole if I died that my wife could sell those cattle and mud be broke, like my mother was, and, and Jack and Fred would be sent to, the, to some to some place. And I sat there and I thought a little bit, and I said, this man has been uh, as good as a father to me, he just run through my mind, and I said, I'm going to give him a surprise. I said, Mr. Loing. Before that bank examiner gets here on that on that note, the money will be here. What did he loan you the money for? What is that? What did he loan you the it money for? On this for? ranch, on this big ranch. We had 2,000 acres. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, I mean just that. I said, you cut equipment, and I said, you settle down and... And be calm, I said, before that, that, that'll be in here. I went out of that bank, and I went to the telephone, and I called the ranch, and I called my two, my two wranglers, I called them, or cowpokes, or whatever you want to call them. And I told them, I said, and it, both of them was Mexicans, uh, Moe's and, and, and Shark, they called them, that is their name. I didn't care what their name was, but they... they and so I says, you tell them to, to go back in them mountains and round up those cattle. And I don't want those cattle to run. You see, in there, I eat this grass and they scour. You want to weigh them, get all the weight you can. Take some salt and shoo them along the road. Don't crowd them. Just when they start to lay down, move them along. Let them drink all the water. Go down among them, keep them quiet. Give them a little salt now and then. And I said, by daylight in the morning, uh, the morning, and I wanted them there. That was the, the day after the, the, this one, one here, you see. And I wanted them on the market. Them guys, I, uh, the, 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 they, they were champions. They were good, good busters, and <laughs> we've well, always had a lot of fun with them. I kept them in all kinds of work, anything rounding up cattle and horses, breaking wild horses to sell to the English uh, 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 cavalry. Is this them here? No, no, this is, a, this is the soldiers. Now then, they round them cattle up and they went in on the market. At 9 o'clock, 
and the office, the, the thing don't they don't stay open any time. You know, the market don't go in very early. At nine o'clock, they call me and said, "Come and get my check." I went and got my check. I was driving the 19 Ford Ford, what you call it, car, Model T they call it. I picked that check up, and I could have went right to the bank with it, but I told him four o'clock. I took this railroad watch out and I looked at it, and at four o'clock I walked in that door. And he says, well, where's Mr. Loings? He says, he's in the back. I went in there. And I said, Mr. Floring, I've got something for you here. And I laid that check down. And you never saw such a surprise in your life. I, 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 he, he said, Fred, he said, I think more of you. And I said, I do my own wife and my own son. That's what he said. Hmm. And there's a letter in this house that says his personal integrity is unimpeached. And that letter, I wouldn't trade back and be a crook and let that man go into jail. That letter's here. And the rest of it could be verified if a person wanted to dig into it. But now then, now then I'm broke. I'm broke, but the bank examiner did come, but he couldn't put him in jail because it, they, they they had cleared on the on the over stuff that they drawed. They drawed from one other bank, you know, you, to, to, from this bank and that bank to, to finance a deal in this bank. You can't do that in Colorado. Mm. You can take that area, and it would have been different, but that's what they had done. And the bank examiner had was bound to find it because when he, then when they checked this bank, they go to the rest of the front, the whole chain, don't you see? Well, anyway, and he said, well, Fred, he said, well, what, what are you going to do? And I said, what can I do? And he said, well, you said, this is a terrible blow. I said, I'm hit, but I'm not out. I'll come back. Don't worry, Mr. Loing. I told him I may go to the tungsten boom. And he said, what are you going to start? And I said, a stage line. And that guy went and got me out of his own account $500 to buy the first car. Hmm. And that gave me the toll hold because I could I could take a $20 load up and bring a $20 load back and take in $40 or $50 a day, don't you see? And I done that, and I was doing good until the tungsten boom, the bottom dropped out. The fellow said, why didn't you? That's the thing that happened. It wasn't because I wasn't there. It, it, is, it, it just seemed that it, it wasn't me that come in, made it go, but the, the, the tungsten, come in, the China commenced to here, it was worth $20 a unit, and they commenced to ship it out of China. And that drop killed the market. So how do these pictures... Well, figure into it all. Now, now this is where we're getting up to this, and it's quite a way to, to, to get up to this thing here. So I, uh, I, 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 I stopped making any money there. So Flack and Ewing had these Studebaker cars, and they couldn't sell these cars. And I was looking for something else new. So I said, why don't you sell these cars? We can't sell them. I said, I've got a deal for you. I said, I'm a race driver, and I can push one of these things, I said, where, where some of them can't, can't get through. You have to do that to win. You have to get through once in a while if you're not a driver. And I said, I want you to challenge Hupmobile and Buick and the other two, I forgot the name now. I said, and tell them you're challenging them that they can climb University Hill, that's the University of Colorado, from town here up to that hill and stop in high gear. Oh, my God, they throw their hats up. A thousand dollars, yes. 
Well, well I said, well, you don't know whether they'll even tie it into you. If they don't tie into you and call your, call your number, why, you, you, you've dared them to do something. And people said, well, I want to see this Studebaker. Get the idea? Well, they finally, you know, it soaked into their head. So, well, they, we put in advertisers and like you, like you find an ad today. But there's nobody comes in there and challenges, challenges these cars to something that they've either got to either back up or what. And people's going to look, and people was looking for the power cars in those days. All right. They waited a little while, and they called him. These fellows went in, and I said, don't tremble now, and don't shake. Because you had to make a certain trip here, and there's one, one square corner we had to take. But I'd learned from Barney Oldfield how to throw the back end of a car, you know, see. And and I, I thought I could do it, but I did dig. I made a little mistake there. I went just a little bit too far, and this wheel did come around. But ad, but Sudebaker advertised they was the first to put a starter on the car. That is a real starter that they could pull that car in two miles with a starter if it broke down two miles they could get into any town and they say why was that but was that as far out as the as the uh, pavement went mm -hmm. most towns only had to pavement out to two miles hmm. so they 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 they, they had they, they, our race call for four men to sit in the back seat four judges hop would take its turn and she couldn't make it, and these fellows would come back and tell you that she couldn't make it. She was out in the same way, and these other cars went out. When the Studebaker come along, come her turn, they put the, these guys in the back seat. And I got up within 200 feet of the thing, and I see she was going to buck out, so there'd just be no race. See? Somebody has to win. And it just come to me like that, and I stepped on the starter and pulled that thing in, that 200 feet with the engine. The engine was working too. And the fellow said he wins. He had the starter and the engine working. Too. Yeah, but the starter, uh, starter and the engine working too, you know, see. Pulled him in there and that's what it's called for. We didn't have nothing left. In fact, we didn't, but we did. We did have that starter. It was Studebaker's starter. If they'd have called my hand on it, they, we would, Studebaker advertised it that way. Hmm. But I, 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 I come pretty near getting caught on the, what you call it. Well, you know, that went like wildfire, wildfire in the Studebaker. This guy, this guy Sheldon, is a, knows how to operate Studebaker cars, and bang, bang, you know, the advertising. And Denver got, got a hold of me, and they want me to take two Studebakers to El Paso, Texas, which I did, and it took two weeks to do it. And and when I got down there, Elliot Garrett was the people I was to go to. They took me to the El Paso Del Norte Hotel. We had anything, and they said, and they said anything that you want, Sheldon. He says you shall have. And he says, oh, well, can you can you can you beat? I said we can beat all comers. But you put up a thousand dollars that you can beat a Whiskey Six. That is the Hudson Super Six. The Chandler, any of them, and uh, so uh, they they got that started, and they was two rich cattlemen in West Texas, and they they they're they're rough and tough, you know, and they had lots of money. <laughs> oh, they treated me royally, mm. and uh, they said you call the shots. Now I said we and 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 whiskey six they called it. They used to do transport whiskey in them, you know, the, the whis whiskey days when they used the bootleg and all. See, yeah. we've had a law in this country to, to abolish all all liquor, whiskey. You've heard of that, I guess. Yeah. Well, anyhow, they challenged us. So they, they come in there and they said, how do you want to write this? I said, Studebaker had a, a truck engine or a, 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 an engine that ought to have been in a plow. But it would pull in low, in slow motion, slow RPM, you see, better than a high compression engine would. And I we wrote this here, that they'd go out to what you call it, hell, 
and pulled this hill in high gear. But the whiskey sticks had to put her paws at the base of the hill, and we had to start in high gear and pull that hill. And they called us. Now, they didn't know about their low compression engine. Their low compression engine is a momentum engine. It has to rev up fast. And she, she runs Studebaker to death at that kind of deal. But Steve Studebaker would sit down there, donk, 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 just like an old, what you call it. And so we got out there, and we started off. They revved that old, what you call it, up high. I revved mine up, and we started. And they'd done pretty well for, for three or 400 feet. And it wasn't very long to the top. But pretty soon she commenced to buck. And of course, there's nothing they could do but stay with it. And the old Studebaker just moved on by her hmm. and took the money. Everybody wants a Studebaker, and they're selling lots of Studebakers to the soldiers that is in camp at, at uh, El Paso. I'll think of that. The, the Fort, uh, not Fort Riley, Fort Logan, Fort Douglas. Well, we'll be, have to get it later. And, and we won. Now then. Fort, Fort Bliss? Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss, that's right. And, uh, and so we <clears throat> went on, and then another car challenged us, and, and because they didn't want Studebaker, the soldiers commenced wanting Studebakers, because Studebaker was a cheaper car or less money, and, and, they, and, and, and so they, they challenged us. And what they challenged us, that they said we could tie the back ends together and they'd drag us all over the fort. Elliot Garrett called me. What do you say? Take them. Sheldon, he says, we can't pull that car. It's bigger than we I said, I don't care how big it is. They say they're going to drag us all over that fort. They ain't going to drag us anywhere. They say they're going to drag us. See, he missed his bet. He didn't say that we were going to pull us. He said we were going to drag us all over the fort. I said, write that in your deal. Write that right in there that he's to drag us all over the fort. A silly deal to make, but he, he didn't specify you might set the brakes on him. Mm -hmm. They went out there and tied the two together. Back ends together. Back ends together. It wasn't only, wasn't any further from, well, from here to, the, to that, they were right there in the chain between them, see. Now this engine, this Studebaker, has a cone clutch. A cone clutch is a wedge clutch like this here. And when she drops in, the, drop, the more you drop her in, the tighter she gets. And she'll either rip a back end out or else something will go, one of the two. And what I've done in that, what I want to do is bury them wheel hind wheels. And when the gun, they took a, they, 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 what you call her pistol, you know, the 45, Smith & Wesson 45. Colt 45? Colts, and fired the gun. And at the gun, I, I revved that engine up, dropped that clutch, and she, she dug some holes there. <laughs> and they hit that, trying to pull her out of there, and they couldn't pull her out. Well, then they wanted, they wanted another shot at it. I said, well, give them another shot. That's all right. And it's the same thing again, you know, see. The difference was they didn't know how to export cars. The man, that Elliot Garrett, <laughs> he put me in mind of the bishop here when he, he told me about the letter I wrote him. And he, 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 I said, he wanted to hug me and kiss me. <laughs> and, he, and then they went to buying Studebakers. Well, <clears throat> in that deal there, after that was over, I got paid off on the deal. And, uh, and so they, they, I, I, then they, they, they wanted me on the truck train. So I, I went over, and uh, I messed up with the, the 7th Infantry. 
But I was really working for the, the, uh, for the uh, Ohio Artillery, see? And these boys, they got to liking me, and you know, and... The, and now the these other, are the ones in the picture yeah, here. Yeah, that's the one in the picture. Now that's me standing there. See my, see my driving gloves on and my putties here and everything? Oh, yeah. That's me right there. And they were they, they talking about hunting. And I said, well, I'm a hunter. And, uh, and what do you want to hunt? And anything. I said, well, all right, we'll go out and kill jackrabbits. I said, we'll drive them just like we do cattle. And that's what we've done. Look at them. Hmm. See a couple of bullet holes through the car? Yeah. Mausers from the Mexican, or the Spaniards. And uh, here were they? Mexicans that shot yeah. at you? You, you, oh, yes, they're shooting across the border all the time. They, 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 didn't you know that they had they, they, the government had soldiers all the way from Tijuana to, uh, to Brownsville, Texas? No, I didn't know that. Well, my goodness. One of the big... And in and, and the Battle of Columbus, I was, I was right in that vicinity there when that took place. And uh, Villa captured uh, uh, Columbus and... Uh, then he, he had to retreat when the soldiers broke through and got, got into their artillery. They had it all locked up, you know. He caught them asleep, and the 9th Cavalry uh, shot it out with them. And then they took after the Mexicans and run them back in Mexicans and shot, killed Mexicans and piled them up in piles and poured oil on them and burned them up. Jeez. And the first thing they known why the United States had invaded Mexico and hadn't notified the government, and then the government is in, you know, the governments of the world, you know, that is some kind of a rule. I forget now what it was. Had quite a time about it. But anyway, they finally corralled, the, led the Americans into a hole down there, and, uh, and, and a, lot of them, a lot of them never got out of there. But a lot of them escaped and come back, and they, their shoes are all wore out, and their putt teeth are wore out, and everything. It's quite a mess. But this is this is this is what this this picture is all about. Is this is this is in Texas. This is in Texas where we're drilling a well, and this is a, this is a there's me and the, 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 the three men in motive power. Now this is uh, whose home? That's a, that's a Homer. Homer. He built this, built a garage here and built this house. Is that in Garibaldi? In Garibaldi. Is yeah. he still? Does he still own that place? He's dead and gone. He was a Mormon, mm -hmm. and he's dead and gone. But they had a, a a big meeting there the other day, and it was forty Sheldons. He was like me. Mm -hmm. I've got twenty six grandchildren, and he had that many or more. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a, here's a, this is in Texas. And there I am, I'm training this dog, see? See me making that yeah. dog to sit down? And uh, this dog really wasn't ours, but we, we trained him. And this is, this is Grandma, and, and they called him, uh, his name is there somewhere. And uh, here, here we are here. The, I'm holding the kids here, you see. There's Fred. And uh, yeah, and there's the dog there. And here's me here, and here we are here training. Uh, I, I forget his name. I, details, a lot of it you forget. Now here's this is Will Fine, the one that you saw, and uh, that's quite a story, but it wouldn't interest you at all because he probably won't be living in two or three years. What's this is an oil field fire in the state of Texas. That's the way the fire field was burned up. Lots of times men lost their lives in them kind of things. Yeah, people tell you, gas is too high. Oh, they make you drive you nuts or that kind of stuff. And that's how he managed the job, that oil well drilling business. Never think it ain't. Here I am pulling a boiler, going out to the oil field. You couldn't get truck drivers that could handle that stuff. Here's where the truck went through a bridge, see? That, that, caved that, in, that, huh? that pump laid, weighed 9,000, and she caved in. And here's the dead man out here, buried out here, and this man is pulling that truck out of that hole of that dead man. See it there? Yeah. There's the wheel. There's the drivers in there. 
that, that's a big, big steam pump that pumps the, the, the muck down and pumps it out of the well when you're drilling. This, this fellow is my driller. We hold all that stuff out to this, the, out to this lease. And this is a couple of fish I killed, killed here, and this fellow here with me out in the ocean. That's out around oh. Cat Catalina Islands. That's Monrovia. Yeah. It? That's in Monrovia. That's later day. This is a Model 20 white, that the greatest truck has ever built for size and inches. It was wonderful. Here we are with four head of horses on pulling through the sand to get to the... And here we are loading the stuff off, off of the car, shipped from Houston, Texas, into, into Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here's the, here's the, here's the equipment. That's a big engine. And it weighed, weighed, weighed uh, 100,000. And here, here we are loading the stuff out here. 100,000 pounds? Yeah, the, the whole rig, you know. That's them big pumps you see that went caved in there, and the boiler and the engines and the draw works and everything. Well, I'm going to go on here and see some more of the life, life story. Well, here's one. Of the, here's a rig here that's built south of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we'll dry, 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 build a dry hole there. And uh, this is at Rehoboth Mission. That's where I drilled a well, sixteen thousand dollars. That was a water well. Yeah, water well. And that what we put up water clear to the crown block, squared up. It is. It is. Uh, Swedged down to uh, a, an inch and a quarter pipe that had, had kept the pressure on, see, and that put it up on a hill so that gravity pulled it down and went into the into the church. It was a church there that was uh, that was uh, run, and this is one in Iowa. You wouldn't know any Jack's of them at all, at all. Jack, Jack's uh, people. Your dad, when he's in the army, and this is Jack in in uh, what's that place way down in Mexico? Um, Baja. No, uh, maybe it's on the back there. And it's a new resort that they got going down there in the last few years. It doesn't say where it is. Here, it doesn't say anything on there? It doesn't say where it is. He, 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 won, a, he won a prize, see, and this prize, it, it took him, sent him down there by airplane. That big resort, it's a millionaire's deal. Here's the fish that they caught. Now, these fellas, they go down there like, like, and they make a big show. But these people actually, you know, they, they bait these hooks and, and get these people. So they come back and big advertising, and that gets them down there. But uh, I don't give a fella very much on it. I, I wouldn't want to catch one. I wouldn't want to fight that hard for them. Ain't no good for anything after you get them. And this is uh, Jack, I think. J. W. Sheldon, our son J. W. Sheldon, 1936. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. Some clarification is needed here about the pictures of two oil wells that appear in this last part of the slideshow that Grandpa drilled in Brazos County, Texas, near the city of Bryan. The first well seen in this picture reads, Sheldon drilled this well for Bryan Petroleum Company, Watt Huber No. 1, Bryan, Texas. And the second picture of this well reads, Bryan Petroleum Company, Watt Huber No. 1, Bryan, Texas, derrick floor of same well, depth 2,900 feet. I believe Grandpa is the one standing in the rear, third from the right, in the dark suit and hat. 
The second well, seen twice before, is shown again in these next three pictures. This one reads, The second well drilled on this lease of 10,000 acres blocked by F. E. Sheldon, 1920. Sold one half interest for $52,000 to Peterson and Hess of L.A., California in 1921. And on the bottom it reads, Peterson Hess, Conatella No. 1, Bryan, Texas, note the cars of the time. This picture of the second well reads, this well drilled in Brazos County, Texas, came in dry 1922. And this last picture of the second well reads in the upper left, Effie Sheldon drilling this for Peterson and Hess in 1921, Bryan, Texas. He had 50 acre offset to this well. And on the bottom it reads, F. E. Sheldon drilled this well for Peterson Hess, Conatella No. 1, Bryan, Texas. In this group shot, I think Grandpa is the one in the dark suit and hat, standing just to the left of the dangling rope. Note the two black men standing off to the right by themselves. And here's a, here's a well. Here's a well we drilled and I think it's Conatella number one. Brian, Brian, Texas. And uh, we got a show in here, and I sold this lease for 52000 And this here, here we are. I forget, can you read that? Derek, floor of same well. Yeah, we drilled two wells there. I went back and drilled the second well and still got a dry hole. And this is the, this is the Brian Brothers Petroleum Company. That's quite a picture. Yeah. See the people out there? Are you in there? Oh, yes. Can you pick it out? Uh, let's see. I'm right back in here somewhere, one of them hats. Back in there. I didn't get up in front, you know, because a lot of them people, they wanted to be out in front show off, but I'm in there someplace. We're wearing a hat. This is Frank and Catherine when he is in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And this is Fred again as a soldier. Well, this isn't all the pictures, but it's some of them. Let's see here what we got here. Oh, this is one of my ne nephews in Oregon. I think he lives at Tillamook, Oregon. Stan. Yeah. It's your name. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I got two Stans then. It's a nephew. Mm-hmm. More out there somewhere. And, uh, but there's a... A, a general trend of the life of the, oh yes, well this here is the, uh, this, this, this is another lace north of Houston, Texas. See, we moved the rig, rig on the ground here. See the, the stuff all piled around? Yeah. And here it is here. And let's see, what was the name of it? See the, the boiler, there's the boiler out there, and all, yeah. this, all this stuff, see? That's where you're getting, and that's the tool house there. Let's see, this is a shelter mode, this, a new location, 60 miles north of Houston, Texas. You see, location of Chatham, Chatham number one, Inter Ocean Oil Company. Located Archie Chatham. 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 Uh, what's that now? Inter Ocean, Inter Ocean Oil Company, number one. And 
then uh, then after this year I was over, I moved to to Houston and put this rig through the factory, the uh, Lucy oil field factory, and then I shipped to New Mexico. Got quite a few more here. Yeah, that's right, ain't they? Well, this here is a. <clears throat> This here is locating the, uh, a what they call a dome, see, and he's picking out the, the slant of the of the stuff here, and this is on the Gulf Coast, and they have what they call salt domes in that country, and so the, me and this fellow's out, and we're taking pictures of this land, and uh, doing exploration work and trying to find more leases uh, to. To drill on, and uh, this is uh, let's see, this is uh, drilling in the Bryan County, Texas. Brazos County. Yeah, yeah, dry. Came in dry, 1922. There's another one there. 112 foot rotary there. There's the boiler room out there, and here's the steam engine working here. That's the steam pumps working. This is the tool house here. Mm -hmm. This is a cotton field. See the cotton? Yeah. See dots of cotton where it's picked and pick it clean. You still going? Just about out. Well, we got that. We got it's been that. this way. You got. That one more there, that oil derrick. One more? Is this it? Yeah. Well, let's see. I think. Yeah, this this is the Peterson Hess Los Angeles outfit. We drilled this for them. Peterson and Hess, Conatella number one. That came in dry too. Did you ever get any ones that didn't come in dry? You ever strike oil? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, uh, I, uh, some of those contracts, you know, see. Oh, so you never struck oil? Uh, I didn't strike oil myself, no. No, I've had a head of, I, 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 I went after it. Uh, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a, uh, a reunion of the family. And this is me and Grandma sitting here, see? Mm -hmm. And this here is the daughter of uh, this fella and this wife here. That's her half-brothers. Mm -hmm. And these are all uh, all relation here, the different one of them. Uh, let's see. Here, here's, a, here's an old Grant there. He's a grin and laughing. This is R. E. Alexander. His wife just died. Want to write his name up there, or hmm? do you want to write his name up there? Grant. Yeah. Yeah. He's right here. Who else do you see there? And. Uh, My brother there, Homer, and this is uh, R. E. R. E. Alexander, half brother. Okay. Uh, and uh, here's another half brother right back here. It was here that Grandpa and I ended our session. Since the tape had run out, we had gone through most, if not all, of the pictures, and the hour was late.